NBC7's nightly check-in is sponsored by Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating, and Air, Flood, and Restoration. We know how. Ignoring public health orders again and taking it up a notch, a local church takes a stand and holds indoor services. Thanks for joining us for the nightly check-in. I'm Mark Mullen. Awaken Church has been holding services against public health orders for more than a month now, and county efforts to stop the church are falling short. We've made this decision not out of defiance, but out of obedience to God. Well, this past weekend, Awaken Church decided to move back indoors to celebrate the church's 15th anniversary at three of its locations. NBC7 has reported on the church since July 16th when it held indoor services against public health orders. The county, after sending compliance officers, eventually issued a cease and desist order. The church then moved events outdoors, but members clearly were not wearing face masks or social distancing. The county has taken aggressive action to close down defiant gyms and restaurants, but with Awaken Church, officials have only asked for compliance only to get ignored. We will continue to explore every option that we have, and we will continue to try and appeal to the better angels of our society. Although San Diego County is no longer on the state watch list, restrictions on indoor operations have not been lifted. The San Diego Catholic Diocese and many other places of worship continue to hold services online and outside. San Diego County is officially halfway through the waiting period for reopening schools. Our case rate continues to trend downward. Today it's 80.3 for every 100,000 people. It needs to stay below 100 until next Monday for K through 12 schools to have the option to reopen classrooms. In total, there are now 36,727 cases. That is the number of seats at Petco Park, excluding box seats. No new deaths were reported. The wife of former Congressman Duncan Hunter was sentenced today to eight months home confinement and three years probation for misusing thousands of dollars in campaign funds. Margaret Hunter pled guilty last year to using more than $150,000 in campaign money for personal expenses, including family vacations and restaurant and bar tabs. Prosecutors credited Margaret's willingness to tell the truth as a crucial turning point to this case. Without her cooperation, we may have had to have gone to trial and proven this in the court of law with a judge and a jury. But because of her cooperation, many of the facts were much more accessible to us. Margaret Hunter faces, faced as much as uh, 37 months in prison, but both sides agree that home confinement was appropriate given the circumstances. Former Congressman Duncan Hunter was sentenced earlier this year to 11 months in federal prison, which he's expected to begin starting in early 2021. 14,000 firefighters are battling three giant wildfires that continue to cause devastation in northern and central California. The fires have now scorched more than 1.2 million acres. More than 1,200 buildings have been destroyed and seven people have been killed. Today, Governor Newsom announced that help is on the way through the presidential major disaster declaration. This will provide resources and more flexibility, resourcefulness, as well as direct aid individuals, uh, not just direct access to the state of California and its mutual aid system in terms of equipment, personnel, and other support. The LNU complex fires are burning more than 350,000 acres west of Sacramento. The SCU complex fires are burning east of San Jose and have grown to more than 347,000 acres. The LNU is the second largest fire in California history and the SCU happens to be the third. Well, at least one of the benefits of the warm weather down here is the warm water. Since last month, the water off our coast has jumped almost 20 degrees in some places. The National Weather Service says the heat is also blocking winds from blowing the hot water away. So the warm water will last as long as it is hot outside. Speaking of, let's check in with uh, meteorologist Crystal Eggers with the heat for the week. I'm meteorologist Crystal Lager. Our weather has remained unseasonably warm and unseasonably humid. A lot of moisture in the air and tomorrow at the beaches, we're still going to have the marine layer through the first part of the morning, a little bit on the muggy side. It's not a dry heat, that's for sure. Inland areas are in the 90s tomorrow, 97 for Ramona, and then more heat for inland spots around the mountains and the deserts. Desert temps tomorrow running about 111. Well, we are nearing the final week now for NBC7 and Telemundo 20's Clear the Shelters Adopt and Donate campaign. We've done this all month long, connecting you to hundreds of animals across San Diego County. Let's meet Laguna. 
He is a two-year-old domestic short hare cared for by the Rancho Coastal Humane Society. They say he is a confident cat and well socialized, just one of many animals looking for a forever home. And for more information, you can go right to our website and go check out NBC7.com slash community. NBC7's Nightly Check-In is sponsored by Bill Howe Plumbing, Heating and Air, Flood and Restoration. Bill Howe adapts with the needs of the community. That's why we offer virtual estimates, a safe and easy alternative for in-home estimates on repairs for plumbing, heating and air, and flood services. Because we know how. It is the first day of the fall semester for tens of thousands of San Diego State students. Signs are posted all around campus reminding people to wear masks and keep their distance. While most classes are online, there are still quite a few science lab classes happening in person. We spoke to one sophomore on campus who says she's still a bit uneasy with in-person instruction. I was like, oh, like, why does lab have to be in person? But, you know, it's something that we have to learn. Um, I understand it, but yeah, it's a little, it's a little scary. Everyone was just wishing we could see each other in person. There are about 2,600 students living on campus right now. As if restaurant and bar owners weren't dealing with enough, they now have to worry about bad Yelp reviews associated with the pandemic. Believe it or not, some customers are complaining about wearing masks or waiting too long for to-go orders. Restaurant owners are asking customers, please be patient, warning people about the changes they might not recognize, like fewer employees or extra sanitation efforts. Take it easy right now. Just chill out. It's the middle of a pandemic, and none of us have ever been through this. Just chill. Have a mojito. That's right, and quit whining. A Yelp spokesperson tells us they're monitoring reviews and plan to make amendments if necessary in this crazy time. That's going to do it for our nightly check-in. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Mark Mullen. Be safe. Have a good night.